I'm Half Jack, and um, I uh, gave this talk uh, in the spring at another con, and uh, I thought I would try to do it to a different audience and see what y'all thought. Um, so we'll start off with a little uh, cognitive dissonance in the form of a joke. A man walks into a bar and says, dang, who put that bar so low? <laughs> Gross. Yes. Was was he a stormtrooper? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, we're all we're all geeks, but we're also all humans, and uh, well, that's what you think. Most of them. <laughs> and um, the uh, you know being alive is kind of cool, and uh, I'm looking to try to be alive as long as I can. So I always kept my eye out listening to stuff and um, seeing about what maybe we should do because, of course, our choices have a huge impact on our past, so uh, whether we're to the grave earlier or later. But, especially for geeks, um, we're screwed as far as evolutionary uh, yeah. turns and trends go, okay? So, here's where our genes came from. Okay? We developed in a world where we lived in close-knit family groups. Uh, we led extremely active outdoor lives. Historic. 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 That's what I say. This is how we, this is how the genes develop. I got you. Right. Okay. This is the the before picture. Uh, stress was acute. That is, uh, you know, fight to the death for the control of the women, or uh, you know, eating the cake bear, or eat, he eats you, that sort of thing. Um, but uh, once that was over, you know, back to the pastoral setting, uh, we consumed um, pretty much anything that we could get our hands on because we were hungry most of the time. And uh, we didn't have access to concentrated sugar and large amounts of fat in general. Um, and uh, of course, what that did was when we could get them, we ate a lot of them. And that was, of course, why they taste so good. Today, uh, we uh, live much more individualistic lives, especially in America. Uh, we are plagued by intellectual stress rather than stress as far as you know the uh, fight or fight type things. Uh, we make our living and find our entertainment uh, sitting in front of a screen. <laughs> we are inside under artificial light, and uh, we uh, snack on highly processed, salty, fatty foods, food-like substances. I would mention. <laughs> And that we wash down with a nice, tasty, caffeinated, sugary dairy. Hey. <laughs> so, we're basically doing it wrong. Um, and, um, yeah. And we're paying the price for it, of course. You, you look at the, you know, the consequences of that, and it may be looking at it in the mirror every morning. It may be, uh, you know, attending funerals for people that are only a few years older than you, uh, that died of quote, natural causes. Um, but uh, what I'm here to tell you is that it's, it's not all bad news. Okay? We, can, yeah. we can sort of do both. We can keep on doing what we're doing with a few small changes and get back a little bit uh, to the things that, happen, that, that would help us out. And uh, actually, there's some other benefits beyond just thinking about health benefits. Okay? So we need to RTF them and run it the right way. Um, that is, we need to get moving, probably more than we do. We need to eat right, which, like I said, that's always a debate. Is you know, butter good or bad for you? Should you substitute butter, a margin for butter, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, get more, better sleep, mitigate the stress. Be social, because that's what our brains feel comfortable doing, and uh, Facebook doesn't count. Darn it. We, we actually need to get in there where we can we can see their faces and interpret the actions that are going on there, um, so and smell the them too. and smell their pheromones yes. to uh, <laughs> make you know everything. So Those, so memory, you know, so the Skype so doesn't count. Skype doesn't count. Uh, okay. Damn, to, <laughs> <laughs> uh, go outside and play. Both being outside and the playing, recreational activities are real fun. And of course, stop smoking. Yeah. Guess what? I bet most people have heard all the things on that list before. Like I said, we're not telling you anything new. 
I don't know. That know. sounds familiar. <laughs> well, that's what I think. But sometimes I, you know, running into students of mine, some of them don't know that. Well, gosh, you know, it really would be better for your body if you moved around and sweated once in a while. So that's sort of the origin of this talk is to some of the things that I tell people that they act surprised on. But one of the things that I do want to sort of emphasize is that many of the problems that we think that come from getting old are not really age-related. They are lifestyle diseases, not age diseases. So um, the you know, obesity, diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, all of these things are not something that you're automatically going to get when you reach 50, 60, 70, 80. Um, it depends on what you put in your mouth most of the time. That's right, Kurt. <laughs> you shut your dirty whore mouth. Yeah. What, what, so the background of this is that things are complicated and simple at the same time. And you've probably seen the little diagram here in eighth grade biology class and stuff like that. Like, oh, here's, you know, here's a little factor that makes, uh, you know, ATP and, you know, power things. And that is just wrong. <laughs> Damn it, boy. You've got to think. Think about this quarter and upside down. Like yeah. This think of a cell as like a big old car factory, because that's the size, scope, and complexity of each little cell in your body. Is that it's got incredibly uh, you know, complex processes, assembly lines. It needs a constant influx of right materials and molecules to build proteins and chemicals and RNA uh, uh, components that it needs. And so, you know, a simplified view is, oh, let me just dump a little bit of this chemical in there and that cell will do this or that. Um, no, that's like saying, oh, I'll just, you know, ship some tires to the, the, the car factory and it'll, you know, roll out my new Kia. Um, you know, thousands of parts have to go into that, be assembled and do it. And it can get by if one or two parts is the wrong size or, you know, has extra junk on it or whatever, but you don't get sort of the, you know, the perfect 200,000, 300,000 mile car out the other end if the parts aren't just, you know, right in there. So what you need to do is you've got to provide a big old inventory of lots of different, you know, feed substances, lots of different molecules that go into it so that it can do its job right. So we have, you know, uh, simple, um, you know, simple results, the cell lives, it dies, it makes stuff, but the complexity behind that is hard. And that's a lot like software, you know, a million lines of code gives you a desktop, okay? Doesn't look complicated, but something goes on behind to make it happen. And that's sort of the way the cells are, but we don't have to decompile the software. All we gotta do is sort of treat it like a black box and give it stuff that it needs to do its job. And we could do that a couple ways. We could try to read all the scientific literature and you know, find out you know, what, you know, if, if people ate this kind of bread versus that kind of bread or did this or did that or whatever. Or we could just basically roll back the clock on food and activity and stuff like that to our pre-industrial ancestors and that's pretty much what we're adapted for. So we don't have to figure it out so much and just sort of do things, you know, three or four hundred years ago. What? So, what to avoid? Accidental death. Uh, wear your seatbelt. Okay. Um, you know, if you ride a motorcycle, you know, drive like the other person is drunk, stoned, and crazy. Uh, probably want to wear a helmet, although there's a lot of debate on that. Uh, intentional death. Okay. Don't pick fights with people who have carrying permits. Um, <laughs> you know, um, also, don't kill yourself. Suicide is still, you know, a very, very, very big killer of, uh, of people in this age group. Yeah. So, and those two, like I said, most people don't die of heart attack in the age group of, you know, this crowd. Uh, but they do, you know, accidental death and intentional death are the beats. So if you can make it through that, you can later get old enough to worry about other things, such as heart disease. So, uh, avoid the injury, the undead, okay. um, and bad chemical processes. These are a couple things that we want to avoid in the body. Inflammation and stress. Okay. So, inflammation um, is a good thing in the body. It helps us fight off bacteria, it repairs injuries. That's why when you hurt yourself, it swells up, is that it gets a lot of chemicals going in there to the repair crew to put back the roads and bridges in order. Okay. 
Um, however, the same stress that you know makes us respond to emergencies, our job, our relationships, all that kind of stuff can cause sort of a chronic level of it, and that's terrible for us. The, the, the difference between sort of a chronic one and um, you know, a, 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 a static one would be, uh, you know, if you're, if you're sort of on edge about the date with the new woman, uh, you know, your body's pumping, your mind is going, your sweaty palms and stuff like that. Where's Jordan? Uh, that's, that's, a, <laughs> that's sort of good stress. Um, it's, you know, episodic, it'll come, it'll go, and, you know, your body will actually kind of be pumped up from it. Um, you know, being stuck in a loveless marriage for the next 40 years, that's chronic stress. Uh, yeah, you know, that's not going to be the best thing for you, your health, and all that. Are you recommending divorce? Uh, well, let's, let's go back, uh, you know, number one, or number two, sorry. Uh, depends on, uh, <laughs> Well, uh, have to evaluate your own situation. Your mileage may vary. <laughs> so, uh, chronic stress is indicated in uh, most of the bad things that happen to us. Asthma, arthritis, diabetes, uh, heart disease, cancer. Uh, the jury's still out on that, but it's most likely. Yeah. Okay. So, like I said, so the civic stress is good. We get some, you know, uh, adrenaline rolling out there. Uh, we needed that historically, you know, fight or flight is the, the name for it, and sometimes one or two of those would keep us alive, okay? The constant stress is bad, okay? Notice that it, you know, basically if you're on a war footing all the time, things at home fall apart. And uh, we've got, you know, weakened bones, decreased, decreased libido, uh, inflammation, which we want to avoid, stress leads to, and of course our mental health. Weakened bones. Yeah. yeah, the constant release of um, uh, cortisol will uh, basically pull calcium out of the bones. So it's bad. Like I said, it's, it's really bad. Uh, the, 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 the classic study on this was a longitudinal study in Britain. They looked at the, uh, uh, the civil servants. And basically, if you look at people who are peons versus people who are supervisors, um, you know, the, the folks that were did not have control of the circumstances and had to do what other people did and were, you know, sort of stuck. Um, their, in case, you know, their rates of cancer, heart rate, uh, heart disease, uh, diabetes, uh, all of the bad things that happened, their rates were much, much higher than the people who were supervisors and had more control over their lives and therefore had lower stress levels. So that is sort of the, the, the gold standard was that that stress caused their bodies to fall apart. So. Um, that's what we want to avoid, so we need to take steps on it. We can't always avoid um, the situation, but sometimes it helps how we deal with it. Okay. So, how do we avoid stress, uh, the bad things? We uh, try to, uh, you know, don't do, ingest, or encounter things that cause inflammation and stress. Now, some of these are diets, some of these are situational, all that kind of stuff. So, let's get to the, the nitty gritty, the one that everybody knew I was going to talk about. <laughs> so, all that's led to that. Yeah. Thirty minutes. Look what time it is. Yeah, look what time it is. Michael Pollan has written extensively on the whole industrial food process and uh, uh, plants and uh, man's role in their evolution and stuff like that. And his advice is just simple: three things: eat food, which many, many of the things you find in the grocery store don't qualify. They're food-like substances. Okay. Uh, if you can't understand any of the ingredients without a dictionary or looking it up on uh, the internet, um, it's probably not food. <laughs> this is basic, you know, stuff, real stuff, animal, vegetable, origin. But if it didn't come from a factory, um, the, it's more likely to be food. Okay. Uh, not too much. Um, I said, the volume matters. Um, sometimes our eyes do overload our mouth as far as uh, how much we want to eat. And it's good, it's good, it's good. But sometimes, the, the big problem with us is that we have a delay between when our stomach is full and when our brain finds out about it. Why are you it's, looking at me? Uh, it just, it just, it just, <laughs> you just resemble that remark. Can so. you overclock my CPU? <laughs> so um, that's the... You know, that's that's a big problem is that we eat too much because we still feel hungry and it tastes good. 
And that we're works. programmed to do that. And Those food-like substances are, have got chemicals in them that keep you hungry. That keep you hungry, right. MSG. Right. MSG. Uh, MSG. <laughs> yeah. um, mostly plants. Um, that's, you know, there's the whole paleo diet thing. Um, and it's really debatable as whether yeah, that much exactly meat green, was green. on prehistoric man's diet. Uh, there was definitely meat in there, but we sort of ate everything that we came along to. That is plants, grains, berries. Bugs. Uh, bugs, that's what I said. A lot, sometimes it was meat, but it wasn't a steak. It was a grub. Because <laughs> they were easy to find and didn't bite back. So, um, you know, that's general good advice, but the question is, of course, how the heck do you eat? That's what our ancestors ate. That's what our genes are predisposed for. And like I said, our genes are just mismatched for our food environment. We love salty, sugary, and fatty things because when you were hungry a lot of times, if you got those, you wanted to eat a bunch of them. But now when they're so plentiful, we see the foot Says the man that was eating. Chocolate covered bacon at the I want to get to that. Chocolate covered bacon is good for you on both accounts. <laughs> so well, we bacon, need we need to eat equal nutrition not fuel. Like I said, we're looking for high high nutritional density in low calories, which uh, for the most part is good fruits and vegetables and stuff. Okay. Um, as far as uh, looking better in the mirror, processed carbs. These are the villain. We want to avoid them. Right. Um, processed carbs have all of the good stuff they started with taken out, ground off at the factory. And then the result, the lesser result is sold to us at much higher prices because they had to work on it. And uh, because it's very easy and cheap with our agricultural system to buy lots of, to you know, grow lots of grain uh, and corn, then we can grind it up and turn it into, uh, you know, fructose, uh, corn syrup and uh, white flour and put it in everything that comes along, from tomato sauce to you know, the bread. So the reason this is bad is that the easily digestible sugars or carbs are broken down into sugar. Um, our bodies have a, a thing to try to maintain homeostasis, and so when the sugar goes, level goes up, we release insulin if we have a properly working pancreas. So, yeah, as you look at me, exactly. you think so a lot. <laughs> Don't have to have a cybernetic current to take this on our head. <laughs> so, but um, I like said, the, being integrated. yeah, but uh, the, um, the, the, the the high sugar level releases it, the insulin pulls it out, says, I need this later, and puts it in fat. Unfortunately for us, later never comes because we don't go hungry. So the, the sugar that we keep eating and spiking our blood sugar just keeps slipping over here into fat. Now, rainy day fund that keeps on growing. Okay. Um, that uh, eventually um, will, uh, you know, when it happens, the glucose will be stripped out because we got a bunch of sugar, we've reached your best insulin, and so, and of course, everybody's heard of the sugar crash. You know, you ate, you drink something, you know, sugary, and an hour later, you, you're real droopy. Well, that's because the blood sugar went way high and then went way low, and we want to try to eat stuff that keeps it right in the middle. So the really bad thing is that after we do this a certain number of times, it's like we've got you know, you know, a, a gun with so many bullets in it. Um, after we shoot so many bullets, our uh, insulin release, but the cells don't respond to it. And so our blood sugar uh, just is not being able to be regulated. And that extra sugar in the blood leads to all sorts of things, eye, eye problems, blindness, um, plugging up little capillaries in our extremities and losing toes. And, ankles and knees and that sort of thing. So uh, we want to avoid diabetes really bad, okay? So it also leads to uh, uh, ED, erectile dysfunction. So uh, we, we don't, Whoa, want, hey, we don't hey, want diabetes, hey. it's a bad hey. thing. Not that old yet, right? So how do we avoid it? The biggest thing is don't drink juice and soda. Even fruit juices have all the good stuff taken out of them and just the sugar left over. So, uh, orange juice and a Coke are pretty much level nutritionally wise. So don't, don't do that. What about V8? V8 uh, depends on the product. Some of those have got like extra sugar, but actually V8s are pretty good for you. But the paint on water will do. One thing to watch, one thing to watch with V8 is the salt content. Yeah, salt content. Yeah. Very high salt. Yes, they do. Um, salt, salt's like I said, kind of a tricky issue is that unless you have high blood pressure, there's not a whole lot of evidence that salt is bad for you. But 
Does, like I said, the jury's still out. There is some upcoming evidence that may be at least inflammation. By juice, do you mean processed juice? Because if I take an apple and I throw it to the juicer, mm -hmm. all it is is just chopped up. Right, it says pure chopped up apple. Is there's a little sheet that goes off the side and throws away the stuff that doesn't juice? Then that's not really that good. Yeah, the pulp. We want the pulp because it's got the stuff that makes sugar not be absorbed so fast, which is the fiber. So orange juice is bad. Eating the orange is great. Mm -hmm. So the grape is pretty good. The grape juice not so good. What about some of the juices that say only sweetened by fruit? Um, that's the sugar they pulled out of fruit, so it's still sugar. Okay. Beer, um, <laughs> beer, I don't know. Guinness is good for you, is the campaign. Um, Where's Mr. Bear? He can tell you. High in fiber. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> like I said, it is, it's processed. Uh, of course, you know, with there you get the calories and the alcohol, and the alcohol is good for sort of keeping that blood thin and running through all the little capillaries. So. Uh, not too much. Uh, on most of this, it's the answer is as long as you don't do too much of it, probably so you okay. Any stouts so over lights? Sorry. Stouts over lights. Mm -hmm. Don't know. Don't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's going to list a beer. How's this one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, on the the soda, diet soda is not particularly good for you either. There's a lot of evidence that the the sweetener makes your brain think that sugar's coming. And so when your mouth tastes it, but your stomach doesn't taste it, it says, oh, well, you just must need more of it. So mm -hmm. it will actually lead you to eat other things um, because of that sort of mismessage between the taste buds. And basically, you have taste buds in your stomach, too. So, um, but, uh, but like I said, the diet doesn't really help. Water, V8, water, the stuff that we were, basically, that we developed, you know, to eat, uh, eat and drink. Uh, cortisol, our friend that also, you know, makes bones weak and leads to infants, uh, is also released when blood sugar is low. So you, you know, spike, it drops down, oh, I'm stressed out, let me release some cortisol. Uh, so, bad thing. Um, now, this is the thing. We, we've been taught for the last 20, 30 years in America from medicine is that fat is bad for you. Take a low-fat diet. But we need fat. Our brains, our skin, many of our internal organs have lots and lots of fat that build up the cell walls, makes things happen. So um, fat is not a bad thing, although you need to be a little bit careful where you get it from. Okay? So bacon is good. You don't want to eat it every meal. Okay? A couple times a week would be fine. But, uh, but especially, you're looking to get most of your fats from plant-based sources. That is nuts, uh, you know, avocados, coconuts. Uh, so those sources, they have oils, uh, oils in them. Some of them are saturated fats, which oh, saturated fats are bad. Uh, no, not really, especially if they come from plants. Okay? Uh, the, the really sad thing is that we, you know, we took away butter, we, we, we took away fried and lard, and we replaced it with trans fats, mm -hmm. which supposedly were good. But it turns out trans fats are like the worst thing that we can put in our bodies that modern you know, technology produces. Uh, so go with the natural, unprocessed, right? except you know, chopped up guacamole's. All right, the blender for the pina colada, that's all right. All right, protein, we do need protein, but we don't need huge amounts unless you're building muscles. So unless you're working out a lot, um, you probably need to cut down your protein intake and replace that with veggies. Right? And the fiber that's missing from our processed foods, um, important, helps, uh, basically it prevents ass cancer, having a lot of fiber. Um, so uh, do, do, do uh, nobody wants ass cancer, so uh, do eat a lot of fiber. Uh, if we eat the stuff before it's processed, it has the fiber in there. Yeah, it's all a nice one little package. So remember, our bodies ate the stuff, they ate the whole grain, they ate the whole fruits, uh, that's what they're built for. And like I said, a balance, a balance. You can eat the El Grande Mexican meal, but don't do it every meal, and don't do something that's equivalent to it every meal. You can have, you know, you don't have to quit enjoying food, but you do just want to, you know, you know watch your choices. Okay. Like I said, vegetarians are usually pretty healthy. So does that mean that meat is bad? No. Well, mostly it means that vegetables are good. Most of the benefit from you know, a high you know, vegetarian diet, whichever level you go, most of that comes from eating the vegetables that our bodies really need. 
So again, you just want to watch the calories on the meat. Uh, like I said, some people just don't do good on a vegetarian diet, and some people are fine on it. And we're all, you know, we're all, all our genes are a little bit different, so watch on that one. But uh, like I said, fat, let's get the tasteless, you know, processed meat, skinless chicken breast. Go for something that's more natural, closer to the original. Tuna, lean beef, hash grade chicken, you know, with the skin on. You know. Like I said, that skin that chicken in has on it, we need it for our neurons, we need it for our skin, we need it for our eyes. You know, going down that path, I keep thinking, well, you know, maybe the perfect food is other humans because they have all the pieces in them that we need. I don't know. I can't. I, it disturbs me. I can't find the trouble. Yeah, you're talking about eating the chicken with the skin, but we were taught in you know class that the uh, skin is where like all the cholesterol and the bad fat is. Well, that, that there's. The question about whether it's a bad fat or not, it's mostly a case of, of, of mouths. If we ate lots and lots and lots of fat, that's not good in any way, shape, or form. But um, the cholesterol in our diet is, there's not a whole lot of correlation between uh, the actual cholesterol in our diet and cholesterol in our bloodstream, since our bodies manufacture cholesterol all the time. So it's a question of how does our body deal with the cholesterol which is mostly related to, uh, again, the whole insulin sugar thing, is that uh, car, you know, carbs getting sugar spikes, most of that is related to the bad cholesterol. Is, is, you know, that. Also, in the matter of seafood, there are certain varieties that you don't want to have too often because of high mercury content. That's right. They're high up in the food chain, so uh, they, uh, they collect, you know, accumulate mercury and other contaminants. They, uh, you know, certain types of tuna are, are, are in that there. But then, uh, like I said, the lower, the smaller the fish, the, you know, generally the, the better it is for you. Sardines are actually superb for you. The, the oils in you, everybody heard about omega-3s and all that? Um, the tablets, again, it's always this reduction of stuff. Oh, I'll take a, a pill, but the pill doesn't have all of the parts. It's like sending just, you know, sending tires to the Kia plant, you know. Um, you need sort of the whole thing, but uh, sardines, I eat sardines pretty much, uh, you know, every day. Uh, and uh, the, it's really, really good for uh, blood cholesterol levels. What's yes. like the worst fish you can have to eat? Is it like catfish? Worst fish to eat? Um, I really, like I said, you would want to avoid one that had a high mercury content. So, uh, and fishing huh? for great whites. Swordfish and shark. Short fish, sort, yeah, let's say, as far as fish that might be contaminated the most with mercury. And even then, it's more a case of, you know, if, if you're 50 years old, probably don't have to worry as much as if you're a 20-year-old uh, female about to become pregnant. As far as mercury is out there. And you wouldn't want to eat it, you know, four times a week, maybe once in a couple of weeks. When it comes to seafood also, the mercury, is it also, isn't it also maybe a bad idea to eat too much because of the iodine content? I have no idea on the influence of iodine content related to, you know, was it bad for that mercury on that as well. So I don't know about that. Okay. So basically on your diet, what you're looking for is variety, color, and unmessed around withness. <laughs> that is, don't process it. Okay. If it's got flour and sugar in it, don't pick it up. That's what you want to avoid. That is what leads to obesity and diabetes and all sorts of other problems. Like I said, also the, the whole carbohydrate thing hugely impacts your uh, cholesterol, uh, HDL, LDL level. Okay. Um, like I said, eat, this, eat the sausage, but leave the biscuit. Mm. Labels, labels on food are lies. If it says it's low in fat, it's high in sugar. If it's low in sugar, it's high in fat and salt. Okay. Um, again, if it's all processed, got the barcode on it, uh, you probably don't want it. That's not real food. Okay. Colorful veggies and greens, carrots, sweet potatoes, kale, um, you know, spinach, turnips, um, broccoli, cauliflower. Cauliflower is not really that colorful, but it's still got a lot of fiber in its taste. Okay. Beans, beans, the magical fruit. Mario, you eat? Mario. Okay, what's so, um, the, the beans, beans are extremely, extremely good for you. Um, and uh, like I said, they're easy to cook. You cook them in a slow cooker or you chunk, you know, throw a chunk of ham in there. Come out, tastes good, fill them. Fruits, fruits come up with a lot of antioxidants to protect the fruit from free radicals and that stuff. 
we eat them and we get the antioxidants. We have to wash the sugar because a lot of ripe, ripe uh, fruit has been developed to have lots of sugar. You know, I said the little, you know, pit-sized cherry of ancient times that we would eat because we were hungry and needed vitamin C is about turned into a nice fat plump one that's full of sugar. So it's just got kind of upset. Okay. Nuts, walnuts, pecans, almonds, these types of things are, are really, really good for us. The oil, uh, like I said, we need oil, and this is a great source for it. Whole grains are good. Like I said, everybody remembers the fruit pyramid they taught you in elementary school. Okay, developed with the the assistance of you know the cattlemen associations and America's grain growers. Um, it is all messed up. It doesn't really. Tell the story. Basically, it was influenced as a marketing scheme rather than any health-based stuff behind it. So, as a whole, we eat way too many processed carbs because it's in that bread and grains category at the bottom that they say we should eat. No, they're starting to revise that, um, but uh, it, you know, it's still it's still out there. A lot of people think, oh, you know, I should eat a, a lot of bread grains. No, no. They said whole grains pretty good. Whole grains actually are fairly recent. Development. So there's a question about whether our genes are really sort of situated for that. So um, I will, you know. like I said, vegetables more than the grains. You know, vegetables, lots of them. Some grains, some meat, fat sprinkled all the way through the way. Okay. Sleep. Give a picture of what food pyramid should look like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there, yeah, there's, there's, like I said, the government, it's a revised one that's got a lot okay. better now. The SDA finally came off of that old one. Do you have one that you feel is I, better? Um, their, their new one is pretty good. Yeah. Like I said, lots of fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, beans and grains, more beans and grains. Uh, meat at the top, at the point, you know, not a whole lot. Um, but uh, the... You know, the main content being lots of variety, because like I said, we gotta give lots of different parts to our car factory to make that car. So the more varied our diet is, the more likely we're gonna collect all the little pieces that make good sales and good you know, proteins. So diet, I know there's a ton of questions about diet. Um, and like I said, the, the, we're just now sort of recovering from a few decades of bad diet advice, well, probably 50 years of bad diet advice. Ever since they said, you know, don't eat eggs and, and bacon and, you know, have tofu with margarine instead. But uh, we're, we're, we're sort of, like I said, starting to actually get, get some food advice that's actually based upon science rather than just conjecture. Okay. Um, sleep, uh, incredibly important. It's so easy to do without it. You know, we can go to bed late, get up early, get the job done. But um, sleep is super important, tied to major uh, boosting in the immune system. Uh, it actually, the more sleep you have, the less heart disease you have. Uh, the less sleep you have, the more likely you are to be overweight because sleep uh, not only is necessary to basically refresh the brain and body, but uh, it's important in sort of regulating the hormone, hormone levels of different things that tell us how hungry we are and tell us, uh, you know, uh, what, you know, what more our brain should do and stuff like that. Uh, the deaths that lead to early death, although that study may be kind of influenced by stress levels, it was like uh, night workers have a much, much higher uh, death rate, uh, early mortality compared to folks that work during the day. Um, so 37% uh, of car accidents are caused by drowsy motorists, right? followed by you know, cell phones and then drunk driving, most likely. When we, get, when we go to daylight savings time, when we fall back and we get an extra hour of sleep, traffic rates go down, or traffic accidents go down 8% in that next one. Okay? In the spring, when we spring forward and lose uh, an hour, that 8% catches up because there's 8% more accidents than normal that week after daylight savings time. So huge impact on you know, alertness and uh, uh, the general health. So do sleep. Okay? So, uh, we should get out in the sunlight, in case you're not familiar, the, the big burning orb in the sky uh, <laughs> during certain hours of the day uh, is the sun. Okay. Uh, that uh, sunlight goes through our eyes, uh, goes to a couple of different uh, parts of the brain, parts that we see with, but also some hormone control parts, the penile gland. And uh, 
it, uh, it sort of syncs us up and keeps us, you know, in tune with our environment. Again, artificial lights, screens, mess that all up, and uh, we don't have sort of a regular march of how our processes work through the day. Okay, so regular report schedule is important as much as we can do it. Um, we want to restrict time before bed, bedtime because light at that time of the day will sort of reset our clock, make us more awake, make it hard to sleep, won't get as deep as sleep. Okay? Uh, being interrupted by text in the middle of the night, not a good idea. A big chunk is better than several small chunks that add up to the same amount. Uh, activity. Right? These are the things that can be influenced by our activity. Pretty much all the stuff right? is how we feel. Dealing with stress, memory, learning, libido, sleep, more we exercise, okay? um, that's all on sort of the, the brain line, brain side. Uh, body side, our immune system is boosted, uh, helps clear out our arteries because uh, it sort of pumps up blood, thins it, uh, washes away plaque and things like that. Um, our reaction to the release of stress uh, hormones, okay? of course, weight control, and it boosts our energy. Sitting around all day, you just sort of want to be a, be a lump and sit, sit around all day. Uh, get out and move, and you're a little bit more motivated to move some more. So, exercise provides benefits, benefits to our brain. It, um, actually, our brain, whenever we learn and encounter new stuff, it actually rewires itself. Okay? New synapses are formed, our, our you know, nerve cells send out a little contact piece and touch other nerves. And, um, when we exercise, uh, our bodies produce a brain-derived neurotrophic factor that basically is like fertilizer for our brain cells. And it makes them grow um, and connect and, and do stuff. Um, the reason this, pretty much scientists are thinking this is, is that we were very, very mobile as you know, sort of pre-industrial humans, or I would say pre-city humans. And um, we needed to be able to learn where stuff was. So when we were out moving around and we found a great spot for picking berries, our brains needed to learn that. And so we, if motion and learning are very, very tied together. That's why, anybody ever heard the concept of a memory palace? Okay, this is a thing, if we're, the, these memory champs that are, you know, can remember a thousand digit number or stuff like this, uh, many of them use the concept of a memory palace where they're visualizing their brain, brain's places and putting numbers or concepts or something there. And because we had to move around in an environment that didn't have Google Maps yet, uh, we had to learn where stuff was. So we've got a place, we've got a really place-oriented memory. And that's why concept, or, you know, ideas like the memory palace help work, is that we're thinking in places and we can put stuff in there and our brains are just really built to remember that kind of stuff. So basically, exercise and makes you smarter. Okay. It actually will boost IQ points, not just performance on you know other tasks, although it does that too. But uh, in measuring IQ points, it will actually uh, give a boost. But there's a contradiction. Yes. Why do we have dumb jocks? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. You can only fertilize you know so much. So much. Uh, <laughs> you don't put seed now; nothing's going to grow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, another benefit of exercise is, of course, greater blood flow, which uh, our brains use an incredible amount of that sugar and oxygen that's in our bodies, and um, the, the getting the blood flowing uh, helps everything, you know, all our organs and skin and stuff like that, but also our brain because it basically pumps all the food to it that it needs. Okay? So, um, because of all the, from uh, BDNF and other uh, neurotrophic growth factors, uh, our neurons, like I said, they grow, they survive better, um, and again, like I said, I think it's tied to location-based memory. Uh, right so. uh, of course, the cardiovascular disease, uh, big factor in dementia. That is, if you get clogged of your arteries in your neck, don't get as much brain, uh, blood to the brain, and uh, it leads to uh, functional death. Okay. And um, cortisol, remember bad cortisol? Well, this makes the body, activity makes the body less sensitive to that. So when you are stressed, your body doesn't do as many bad things to itself because of it. So um, it just really, like I said, so many uh, doctors just call it the fountain of youth, is that moving our bodies, getting the blood pumping, uh, is just incredibly beneficial for our health, makes you live longer. Okay. Remember, if I remember Jack Moraine? Yeah. 
I mean, he's like ancient. He died. Yeah. He's not, he, he died about just, just yeah. about six months ago. Yeah. He, he died, but he, he was almost 100 years old. Yeah, he was almost 100 years old. And can't say that exercise made him to 100 years old because it didn't hurt. You know, you know so, yes, you, you know, some, you got to know the bell curve is that we've got the bell curve. People over here, you know, they can smoke, drink, and crowds a lot of women, and they'll still live to hurt. Okay, people over here, they're going to die at 40 just because. But all these people in the middle, <laughs> they, they, can, they can shift their their you know their life expand by doing certain good things. And exercise certainly doesn't help or doesn't hurt. Supposedly, I read on Yahoo, there's a guy <laughs> in <laughs> Europe somewhere. Yeah. He's supposedly like 130 years old. Uh, yeah. Supposedly, like I said, he know. would be you know yeah. on the natural <laughs> part of the bell curve. But if you look at some of the people that live the longest, they were slaves. Oh really? I've done research. Okay, yeah, lots of activity, and I guess depends on how the stress level will be. Don't have to decide what you're going to do today. But, uh, I mean, I'm not saying that's a good Yeah, yeah, it's just like statistics. <laughs> burning calories, do it, and your body sort of gets pumped up, and it keeps on burning even after you stop. Mm -hmm. um, of course, our muscles strengthen your response to the of exhaustion. You don't have to lift. You know, huge amounts, you just have to lift it to your muscles, can't lift anymore. And that'll happen fast with heavy weights and longer with slow weights. But both of them will make your muscles shrink. Uh, big immune boost. The more people exercise directly related to uh, decreased you know, diseases as far as uh, you know, catching colds and stuff like that. Okay. Helps our cholesterol. You know. um, and again, let's see, it already reduces our stress uh, responses. So you don't have to be a marathon or a triathlete or any of that stuff. Okay, I think most of the people who do that are probably sort of addicted to the, uh, you know, that uh, endorphin release for the athlete. That's fine. Uh, only that they're probably going to wear out some joints and have to have replacements sometimes sooner than most people. So walking is like the perfect exercise. Just heavy enough to get the blood pumping, but not so much to ruin your knees, like jogging or running. Okay? Uh, you should try to include intervals. Um, you know, if you get if you used to, you know, get winded after walking up the stairs, but in the last couple of years you've got, you know, winded walking to the refrigerator, um, you, you need to increase your endurance and intervals, that is, you know, short burst of intense activity uh, will sort of help your body get geared up for that. So those are important. And strength training, um, fat, um, muscle burns, you know, fat all, or burns calories all the time, and so having more muscle helps you uh, control that. But, Glucose control, again, uh, mitigating that boost, sugar spike, uh, bone density, uh, all of those things are uh, important for strength. So a little bit of everything. Again, the same thing, moderation is the key. Don't eat all of one thing, just eat a little bit of everything. Right? So diet and activity together really, really, really help all of these things. Right? So high blood pressure, cholesterol, hangover, that is the hangover your belt and not you know, this morning, um, <laughs> adult onset diabetes, uh, and you, you should be, you should know these numbers. In case you don't, you should know what your blood pressure is. You should know what your cholesterol count is. Uh, when you get the blood test for cholesterol, you should check to see what your glucose levels are. So if you don't know those, it's a good time to try. Every community pretty much has, uh, you know, free blood, you know, free screening every year that you can get blood taken for very, you know, free or very little. Um, so watch out for those and or put them on the internet for them and find out those numbers because um, not knowing them could lead to premature death unnecessarily. Because most of them you can take a pill and it will help it some. It's just that if you do the exercise and diet, you avoid the side effects of the pills. Okay, but I said, a lot of people can throw away their pills after they have you know, tackled the problem and, and uh, you know, change their diet, change their activity level. So, we're running out of time here, so I'm going to say that we want to uh, try to stack the deck for your success. Okay? Don't buy the junk food and, and keep it around the house, just in case. Like I said, you can't eat it if it's not there. Um, keep some frozen vegetables. You don't have to eat fresh vegetables. They're great, but frozen vegetables today are so close to being fresh um, that you, know, you get all the health benefits, and it's much, much more convenient. Okay? Uh, you know, drag some out of the freezer, throw them in a the bowl, microwave them 10 minutes or 5 minutes, depending on how much it is. Uh, drizzle olive oil and sprinkle some Parmesan cheese on it and dig it. Eat it with the chicken breast or not or salad or whatever. But veggies, veggies, veggies. Okay? The good thing is, is that you pretty much can't eat too many vegetables. So 
Um, and you can eat until you're full and over full, and it's still going to be good for you. Okay? So you know, there's just no, no, no downside to eating your dishes. Okay? Um, slow cooker is great for, you know, cooking chili with beans or beans and, uh, you know, uh, grain and soak grains and cook them all day and they'll be tasty at the end of the day. Uh, you know, balance is key. Go ahead and throw something that's, throw some meat in there that's got, you know, protein and fat. Uh, and eat it with it. It'll make it taste better and it, you don't get too much from it. But, you know, a little bit of meat mixed with the vegetables, fine. Okay. You can always make it a game. Of course, gamification is a big thing everywhere. Uh, we can you know, track our steps. We can challenge our friends to you know, walk more miles or you know, walk, we can walk more than in one day than they can. Um, put a checklist, say, okay, I want to Say every other day, I'm going to get 30 minutes of activity or 20 minutes of activity of that. Uh, basically, uh, any activity is good enough to start with. You know, if you can just like you know 10 minutes, um, do 10 minutes. Don't feel like you got to walk for an hour. Right? Um, it's you know trade off between should I do this extra work or should I take 30 minutes to exercise. Right? Studies show that you're actually more productive if you take off the time and do the little exercise and then. You lost 30 minutes of work, but you're going to be better at work when you come back. Okay? So it's like every study says, do it, do it, do it. Okay? Um, sleep versus exercise, get the sleep. You're better off with the sleep. It's that big of an influence on okay. um, Supplements, vitamin D. If you are a female and might ever become pregnant, you want to take folic acid. And fiber. Um, you could probably, probably benefit from adding a little fiber to every meal. Um, that way, anything that does have a little bit, you know, sugar stuff in there, um, it's going to help mitigate. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm running out of time, so I'm going to skip through these to the end. Uh, be social. Okay, that's what our brains use for. It in, improves our mood. Um, it uh, uh, makes us feel more connected. Uh, just, you know, overall benefits there. And of course, start smoking. Um, one in five deaths in America is directly. Uh, Attributed to uh, smoking. Right? Uh, 14 years is the average life shortening. And um, for that, for the years that you are living, you have many, many more chronic health problems that impact your quality of life. Right? Uh, cancer, yeah, but also heart disease and respiratory conditions. About a third of uh, deaths to each one of those. Most people, oh, I just didn't catch Actually, smoking, you know, kills. Uh, you know, uh, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people every year from heart disease. So uh, those types of things are, are what we're looking for. Uh, if you s insist on consuming an addictive drug, you might want to take up something a little less dangerous. Yes. Like heroin. Okay? Yes. It's also less addictive, by the way. Don't want tar. 2% okay? <laughs> right? um, of chronic heroin users die every year. Right? 10% of the number of smokers die every year. Okay. I think that number includes a lot of people who die because of smoking, although not presently smoking. Um, and I went back and double checked those numbers. Uh, it really is that big a deal. Okay. Is that less than 2% of heroin users, actually, if you look at occasional heroin users, it's like um, you know, five, five tenths of a percent. But um, tobacco uh, is bigger. Nicotine is bad for you, but the smoking is worse. So I've seen several people with the e-cigarettes. Um, yeah, use those. Use those. Uh, um, the, the nicotine, uh, it, like I said, it is a, a toxic alkaloid, and um, our bodies do, you know, basically tighten up our blood vessels and other stuff for it. But um, it's uh, it's better to do that than to do the smoking. You know, no matter what kind of chemicals they add to it, to make it taste good. So uh, just if you're thinking about smoking, or thinking about quitting uh, smoking, and you need the e-cigarette to do it, okay? or just want to switch over, you know, need an e-cigarette for people who don't want to quit, but uh, do that. Just don't get the actual raw tobacco. This is one case where the processed product is actually better for you than the original natural product. Okay? So I'm out of time, but maybe I can take one question. Is smoking pot bad for you? Hmm? Is smoking pot bad for you? Um, I was thinking about that question earlier. It's probably not in your lungs anymore, but um, there's a lot of things coming out that actually it's probably pretty healthy for us. 
I'll volunteer to test it. Yeah. <laughs> they said, you know, I mean, medical, medical marijuana is unquestionably good as far as improving outcomes for cancer patients and, and you know, people who need to boost their diet and stuff like that. Um, on the side of whether it's, uh, or whether a pot is good for you or not, I'm thinking that, I suspect it probably is. And like I said, maybe the smoking part is not wonderful for you. Yes. Cabbage. Cabbage. Very good for you. It's excellent yeah. and it's tasty. You can that's pick my, it so many ways. That's yeah. my lunch. Yeah. Um, a long, yeah. A long There's lunch. a whole thing about you know fermented products, yeah. uh, yogurt and kefir and cabbage and coleslaw and sauerkraut and stuff like that. A, uh, a lot of other stuff is good for you. Microwave potato right here. Microwave potato. Yeah. One part that's very mobile. Missing from the earlier part of your presentation was you're preparing prehistoric man to modern. Right. <laughs> One part you didn't mention was the prehistoric man tended to live a shorter life well, than modern men. Well, the, the, the numbers, like I say, if you look at average age, it's average age. Because people were basically living almost as long as they are now. It's just that thousands of children were, were dying young. Now, when I looked at the numbers, is if we excluded children, mm -hmm. it's still a much shorter life. It's still a much shorter life. Well, um, we had a lot of dangerous animals back right. then. Well, you, you get eaten. Yeah, you get eaten. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but you, you would you would you, you would get an infection and die. That's right. Um, you know, and we we do have many modern conveniences that are uh, much beneficial. And like I said, you know, if you if you get around enough old people, you find out that oh yeah, well I almost died because my appendicitis first, or I almost died because you know this medical situation came up, and because of the medical interventions that we have. They survived that and lived another 30 years. And, and you know, early man would not have really had right. this. Right. Uh, well, the point I was trying to drive at was uh, prehistoric man's body and their uh, history did not drive towards a long life. Right. Is that once they reproduced, the <laughs> extra life was you know, pretty much. Bonus. Yeah, it was bonus. <laughs> it, it, um, you know, one, once you've sown your seed, then you know, you're not really useful anymore. So <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but the body itself is try. still built to last. And um, you know we we can with modern if we eat right and exercise and have modern modern interventions, uh, then we can we can live a lot longer life and be healthy right up to the end, rather than spending ten years in a bed in a nursing home uh, at the end of our lives. So, all right, question. Uh, what about rice? Rice, brown rice, brown rice, okay. Yellow or white or any other color that has all the good stuff running off of it, bang. Okay. So yeah, like I said, if, it, if it's not the whole thing, then it's probably that. I'm going to tell you something. Also, if you're, if you're diabetic, which I am, you have, you have some foods will cause a much faster rise in blood sugar than others. Right. Even in their whole state. Yeah. Right. Grains, grains and potatoes and so on, you have to watch, you have to watch the quantity yeah. because it will spike your blood sugar faster. Than right. And like I said, you know, well. again, and that's where the variety comes in. Is that if you have something with the fiber and some vegetables and some protein all there together, it moderates the spike or the release of blood you know, sugar and then the spike of you know, the blood sugar less. All right, I gotta get away out of the way from the next person, I guess. Although I have a lot of people waiting with him. Okay, good one. Thank you. Thank you.